Any electric guitar player out there who records at home, I'm sure it has been searching and wondering, how do you really successfully get those huge, epically powerful guitar sounds? Those sounds that like are just coming out of the both in the left and right channel and just sound huge and epic, right? So that's what I'm gonna teach you guys how to do today. And I'm gonna use an example from a song that I released on Monday that sounds just like this. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So you're watching GarageBand and Beyond, YouTube's longest running home recording tutorial and equipment review channel. I'm really glad you guys decided to stop by and watch this video because you're gonna learn something pretty awesome today. So the big secret is you don't need a lot of guitars. And in fact, that song that you just heard, the song that I did, was really one single guitar with a few little ornaments for the like massive epic moments. Um, but beyond that, it was the, the guitar part was one single guitar. And there was one stock GarageBand plugin that I love using, and we're gonna talk about that. So let's look at the project file here. This right here is the guitar track, and I'm just gonna solo this out for you and listen to it. <laughs> Right? Okay, so that's the guitar part that you already heard, but that's the whole thing. So one thing I wanna talk about, okay, let's talk about the plugin, all right? So the plugin that I'm using that is, again, stock GarageBand is this one right here, the Classic Drive. This is one of the ones that I use all the time. I talked about this in the video where I talked about like the GarageBand plugins that you can trust. Um, Classic Drive, super, super awesome sound. Now, one of the things that this plugin has stock when you open it up, is this stereo spread, okay? And that is created because there is a mixer on the virtual pedal board, right? So the mixer is here and it is splitting these distortions, the vintage drive and the rock, rock, rock distortion uh, between the left and right. And so let's see, I think it's the, the rock one is going on the left and the vintage drive is on the right. One little detail about this that I had to sort of decide if I want it or not. If you get, when you open this plugin stock is you'll find this pan control dead center at 50%, um, which gives you a sound like this. And what you'll hear is that coming out of the right channel, it's a little bit lower um, in volume and it's cool. Uh, and I did keep it that way, but I, I tried to even it out a little bit, but I want you to hear what it sounds like more or less stock. <laughs> Right. So, you know, basically the right side or sorry, the left side is a little bit quieter. That's what I meant to say earlier. The left side is a little bit quieter. So what I did was um, just roll it a little bit in the direction of the left. Five percent. I mean, not a huge difference just to sort of eliminate, not eliminate, but just to help balance that a little bit better. Still leaving the left signal a little bit hotter. I mean, if you look at it on the meter while it runs, uh, watch. <laughs> Right, but it's not as dramatic as when it's here at, at a clean 50%. Watch it again. Let's go back to that same part. Right, it's a minimal, minimal difference, but I did want to mention it that I did sort of just spread this, or it did slightly even it out. Um, in the whole mix with all the vocals and things going, I started being like, why is the guitar uh, like so left heavy or yeah, right heavy. I can't, I'm getting a little confused, left heavy. Anyway, so this is the plugin that I'm using, this stock classic drive sound. Uh, it is an awesome sound. 
Uh, what did I do to tweak it a little bit? I turned the tone up a little tiny bit. I add a little bit of the hall reverb more than you know the stock plugin. Um, if we come down here to my plugin list, it's all the stock stuff. The only thing that I really turned on was this, and I went to Crunch Guitar. Um, and this was partially because my Monday music videos, um, I've been trying to streamline it a little bit, and I've also been having a lot of fun just using the GarageBand plugins. I have really discovered um, that there are times when that's all I should be using because they are good enough. I've said it a thousand times on this channel, like the more and more you tweak and the more and more you mess with these sounds, the worse they get. And I was guilty of that and I am still guilty of that sometimes. Sometimes I know exactly what I'm going for and when I'm searching for sounds, um, that's when I tend to sort of screw stuff up. Like I'm like trying to tweak too much of these stock sounds. Basically what I'm trying to say is I have learned to trust a lot of these stock GarageBand presets because a lot of them are epically good this one being a prime example of that the more you mess with it the more you're going to mess it up so just leave it alone or, and make the most minimal adjustments that you can if it doesn't sound right to you well then you need to comprehend that um, you might need to readjust the way you hear things because these plugins are spot on the drums mixes are spot on all sorts of stuff spot on okay so that was basically the bulk of it now of course precision playing this is a ton of 16th notes da -da 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 now that was important for it to be clean and precise so i do have the groove track on um if you don't know what i'm talking about let's show you what i'm talking about okay so come up here to the track menu you're going to go to configure track header and that's going to open this window right here and down at the bottom you're going to see groove track right so you turn that on, and when you come in here, I'll, here, I'll turn mine off. You can come in here using the little star that is appearing. You tell GarageBand which track you want everything else to follow. So in this case, I wanted everything to follow the drum track, right? Big surprise there. Um, I even went in a little farther. If you go into this drum track, it is also down here. It is following the guitar part, right? Um, and the guitar part and the bass part are now locked up and synced to the drum part, right? So that was uh, one of those things that just became essential. I'm, you know, I played pretty cleanly. It wasn't too bad. If I turn it off, you can hear it. It's not awful. Right, it, it, it wasn't too bad, but I wanted it to be like dead, dead on. So I used the groove matcher and it just sort of snapped it all to the grid and it was awesome. Um, yeah, so that that is also a component of making the guitar parts like just sound like, you know, like a machine gun. Da -da 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 -da. That's kind of the sound I was going for. I just really wanted it to be like powerful and angsty and angry and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, okay, so that's the rhythm guitar part. On the bass, another stock plugin from GarageBand, Crunch Cab. We're gonna to listen to that all by itself. Again, this track has been locked up and synced up using the groove matcher uh, with the drum. So a nice and precise playing uh, accentuated by the groove matching, right? So, uh, or the quantiz quantization as you may want to call it. Um, all right, so those were, that's the rhythm section, right? So let's just listen to this rhythm section all by itself. Right? Ah, I mean, I'm pretty proud of this song, you guys, considering I wrote it Monday morning, recorded it midday on um, same day, Monday, and then was mixing it, editing it, all that. It's These are one day productions. If you don't know, check out my Monday music videos. Um, okay, so that is that. That's the basic rhythm section. Now, for some of these extra epic moments, right, like the the peaks of those, those large ascending crescendos um, that last for several bars, it's this stuff right here. And I just want you to hear, these are ornaments, okay? 
And again, I want you to, one of the takeaways from this whole video that I really want you to understand is how few things I used to create such an awesomely huge sound, okay? So those guitar tracks, or that single guitar track, that single bass and those stock sounds, right? Um, these ornaments are the, the, the icing on the cake, right? So here's the one coming out of the left channel. right? Dirty. It was dirty. It was angry. I was um, just bending a note. Like I, f I started on the root note and I was like, you know, 16th notes here. And I was just like, just slowly and relatively inaccurately just climbing up the neck until I got to that high, well, that high D, right? Um, I think it's D. Yeah, it's D. So, uh, so the, that high D. Okay. So again, it was not that clean and it was a lot of bending. It was supposed to sound crazy, right? So I didn't want to play it too cleanly because that wouldn't have been good. Uh, this is the other one. And this one's a little bit more clean, okay? So I didn't want to go too heavy on the chaos, but um, when you combine them, it's chaotic. But this is the other side and this is octaves. Right? Now, combine those two. Right? I mean, <laughs> makes me, gives me the chills, man. It totally does. It like really does. It's epic. All together, here you go. That's it, you guys. I mean, that is literally five tracks. And, and the, the bulk of the music is three simple tracks. So, you know, I think when I finished this song and it was all said and done and I sat back and I listened to it, I was like, man, I can't believe that it, you know, I, I haven't taken my own advice on a lot of the songs I've released over the last few months. Um, you know, the last heavy one, there were dual guitars, I believe, like doing a left and right guitar thing. And now I kind of wish that I hadn't. Um, this one single guitar coming out of this classic drive sound, it has that big left and right sound with two sounds coming out of each side, you know, cause there's two different distortion pedals. Um, it totally works. And it's just, it was the thing that made this song have that really huge guitar sound. Um, so like you hear all the time, keep it simple, people keep it simple. The more you layer the more you screw it up, right? The, the good songs out there, the stuff we all love is done this way. It's simple, simple, simple. And that's why you hear every engineer online say it at some point, you know, less is more, guys. Um, now, quickly, I will address the vocals uh, because these were really fun vocals for me. Um, these, I've never sung anything so quickly before. And, um, you know, this is what they sound like. I've been running, I've been gunning, I've been thinking, I've been drinking, I've been working, I've been working, and I gave up. I've been breaking, I've been chicken, I've been toying with destroying every morning, there's a warning, and I break down. So, um, one of the things in there that makes it cool, I think, is the two lead vocals are right here. And they are panned 15 plus and minus, oops, I moved it, but um, negative 15. Um, but anyway, they are panned slightly to the left and right, so you get a nice stereo vocal sound. This is the first time I had to do it, just so you are aware. Um, it wasn't easy. I didn't exactly know where to breathe like when I first started singing this song. So I actually did record this verse by verse by verse. I had just written the words. I didn't have them memorized yet. Uh, I hadn't learned where the breathing spots were yet. Uh, so above it, you can see this is a take from later in the day after I had sort of mentally digested the lyrics a little bit. And so you can see that they do span all of the you know the whole verse before you get to the chorus um but that's because you know later in the day i was like oh those vocals should be doubled and then at some point i i actually accidentally panned them left and right by i thought they were backup vocals or something and i was like oh wait that's way better <laughs> having them slightly left and right like that it gives you that sort of you know that foo fighteries la production style um i thought that was worth mentioning last thing i want to talk about is the vocals uh is a bit of music stuff, okay? So this is what they call contrary motion. Um, and what you'll hear is the guitar part is ascending, but the vocal lines in the harmonies are descending, right? 
So just take a note of this mentally. Just contrary motion is one of those really cool things you can use in music to help create a lot of tension and release. Uh, that's what I was going for here. So here's the tension part in the chorus. You're listening to the music going up, vocals going down. I turn this I've got the time to make this new thing happen. I've got a fire burning up inside of me. Right? I mean, let's solo those vocals just so you can hear them. Got the time to make this new thing happen. I got a fire burning up inside of me. Right? So those are going down, and obviously that guitar part is going up, right? Right? So you can hear it ascending and descending, contrary motion. It's just one of those things. If you find a moment in your song to add some contrary motion, you might give it a shot because it's one of those really easy things to come up with that really makes any, you know, simple song will just sound a little bit more uh, mature and a little bit more sophisticated. Let's say that it's just it's a really easy thing to do. And I thought it would be worth mentioning in this video. So again, you guys, long story short, don't use too many guitars. If you're trying to get an epically huge guitar sound, one, two maximum. Um, and that's for the rhythm guitars. Keep it simple. I really, right now, I think I'm just going to keep going with the one guitar thing because that it seems to be working well. The ornaments, when you need them to be there, use them. You know, come up with some high part or whatever it may be, but come up with something in the strategic moment where you need a build, where you need, you know, something new to happen, a new musical element to be introduced into the song. Um, use those moments when you have them but don't overdo it, right? There's too much of a good thing. You want to, you want that to stand out. You want those little ornaments to stand out. You don't want them to be, like if I had done that everywhere, it would have been boring by the time you got to one minute, you'd be like, there's too much chaos all the time, right? Um, but when it comes in in that moment, it's just, you know, it is what it is. It's just awesome. And uh, you know, at the end, in fact, when I was mixing this, this was something, all the ornamental stuff, that crescendoing, ascending stuff, really only existed here way down at the end. And at some point I was like, you know what? It should also be in the intro. It's, it'll do a sort of nice uh, bookend thing. Um, you know, you hear it at the beginning, then you don't hear it ever again until you get to the very end of the song. Just a way to sort of cleanly come up with a you know beginning and an ending with the arrangement stuff. Uh, I think that's about it. I hope that you got something out of this. I know I was talking quickly. I drank a lot of coffee this morning and I have so much stuff to do today. So I really wanted to crank this out. But you guys, I'm going to NAM. I'm leaving for the NAM show uh, tomorrow afternoon. I'm heading to California. I'm going to go meet up with our good friend Marty Schwartz and a bunch of really cool people. Uh, I think I'm going to meet Justin Sandercore and I uh, have a meeting, you know, like with a big group of YouTubers and uh, all the companies that you've seen me deal with, plus some new companies that I'm going to go out there and uh, try to, you know, romance a little bit so I can get some new equipment, new guitars and stuff into my studio here to review for you guys. Like I said before, I have been doing this longer than anyone on YouTube. No one out there has had a YouTube channel that has consistently made equipment reviews and recording tutorials longer than me. I've been doing this longer than anyone. So <laughs> I'm proud of that fact, man. I'm really proud of that fact. And you know, I've seen other channels come up um, over the years and they've, you know, they're doing better than me now. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's been interesting to watch as somebody who sort of was at the very beginning of the whole YouTube thing. Um, it's been interesting, but I'm still here. I'm still plugging away and you guys are still watching. That's why I keep coming back and making videos. And I genuinely appreciate it and love that you're coming and watching the videos and learning. Uh, the songs that you guys have been posting are awesome on the Facebook page and wherever you may share them with me. I'm genuinely impressed with how we've all, you know, been able to work together through this medium. It's been pretty awesome for me to hear your guys' recordings improve because of the tutorials that I make. That is exactly why I make these tutorials. Uh, to educate people that GarageBand is totally awesome. You can absolutely positively make professional sounding recordings with it. Um, and that's, that's the end. Okay, you guys, thank you so, so much for watching. And um, video on Friday, I'm not exactly sure because I am going to be at the NAMM show. I might try to do a live thing or something. But um, until then, uh, we'll see what happens. And otherwise, you'll just see me here on Monday with a brand new song. All right, you guys, talk to you soon. Peace and love.